Hello everybody, welcome back to Cool's Book Reviews. This week we are checking out the noted Desperado Pancho Dumez by John LeMay. So previously we have featured a couple different books by John on the channel including Kong Unmade as well as 20th Century UFOs. This is another one of those books I had originally picked up in Roswell, New Mexico when we were lucky enough to meet John at the Roswell UFO Festival this past summer. Now when we were talking with him at the festival, he did let us know that this did deal a little bit with Billy the Kid and kind of built this fictional story around the legend of Billy. And so that's something that drew me right away to this book. What's kind of funny is we've already had tall tales and half-truths of Billy the Kid. So it's really cool to have both the non-fiction as well as the fictional take on this Billy the Kid mythology. Let's take a quick look at the book cover itself. Up top we see the author's name, John LeMay. As well as we have the noted Desperado Pancho Dumez in the shape of Billy the Kid's headstone or footstone, as some people might call it, uh, being that the more famous one, I guess, that people really think of is the one that has pals and it also has Charlie Beaudry and Tom O'Folliard on it. And this takes place in 1976. And then right here you might be like, what is LP? Well, that's actually Logan Pack who is the artist behind this and is another person we were actually lucky enough to meet at the Roswell UFO Festival. And he does some really fantastic work. Make sure uh, to go check out his work as well. As usual, we'll obviously link all of John's stuff below, but this time we'll also include all of Logan's stuff because I really do think his artwork is fantastic. Really good stuff. Now on the side, you see Bicep Books, the publishing company, uh, the noted Desperado Pancho Dumez, and then it says book one of the 21 guns, which is something if you haven't kept up with the channel, you should because we've actually interviewed John on the channel and he gave us a little bit more detail in this 21 guns series that he is working on. And then on the back, we just see a bit about what the book is about, obviously kind of draws you in, obviously some more great artwork and then the ISBN. All right. So this book does clock in at 249 pages and really goes to the end of the book. At the back there is a picture as well as we got Logan's card here. Like I said, some more fantastic art. And throughout the book it's really just words, but you do every once in a while get some pictures throughout. Hold on, let's see if we can find them. There's one. You just get some pictures throughout the book sometimes about what is going on, but for the most part, just words um, at the front. We, Like I said, we did meet John. So we were able to get this one autographed. As well as we got autographed by Logan. So pretty cool that we got both the author and the artist. Now this is a book that I think John was super passionate about. At least when we did our interview a few weeks back. Because like he said, this was really his first book that he started writing. He said he started writing this when he was 19. But before he got this one published, he had actually ended up publishing quite a few different books. So it just kind of shows you sometimes how long it does take to bring a book to life. You know, you have all these ideas, but then you got to put it together. Then you got to, you know, morph it and edit it. And then you got to be able to get it published. But it will pay off if you stick with it. Never give up. So before I keep rambling on that, yeah, it was super cool at least to see that process and just see some inspiration perhaps for any of you writers out there that perhaps are struggling and you're at a point and saying, hey, maybe this is taking too long. Maybe I won't be able to do it. This book took a little bit to write, and it turned out fantastic, so don't give up. So what is this book about? Like I kind of talked about earlier, it is about Billy the Kid in a way. You see one of the stones that are at the gravesite of Billy the Kid in Fort Sumner. Now, as we have talked about on some of our other videos, there's discrepancies as far as where Billy is buried, just due to the fact that there's been a couple of floods and the headstones were washed away and then not really put back up. Now, luckily, we do at least have a kind of general area and that's where the stone is today as far as the pal stone as well as this stone but then there was also that awesome survey to kind of give us a little bit better viewpoint of where the body might be within the fort sumner cemetery so if you want to see how we kind of figure that out click that link above but for the most part they got it generally right it looks to be off by just a little bit now having said that this is a fictional book and it kind of delves into the world of Brushy Bill Roberts. Another character that we've talked about a little bit on the channel. 
uh, more as of recent, and I guess we will be talking about him again. Story is Brushy came out in the 50s claiming to be Billy the Kid. Now, as of today, it's really a heated debate, and when I say heated, I mean super heated debate. Go check out any of our videos that talk about Brushy, look in the comments, and you'll see what I mean. I mean, sometimes it gets pretty cutthroat. Today, the majority of people I don't think believe Brushy was Billy the Kid, and a lot of that just has to do with the kind of story that he gave, and it's almost, it's so grandiose it makes even like a, a action book like this seem dull in comparison because man brushy's story is like crazy now brushy isn't directly referenced in the book uh there's a character called tumbleweed williams but being that it was the same time and he also died of a heart attack back in texas it seems like that's who that character is obviously based off of now the main character's in this are actually the Dumez brothers, Poncho and Dorado. And then later on, spoiler warning, Sean. Which, then spoiler warning again, turns out to be a cousin. And the whole thing kind of revolves around this theory that Billy the Kid faked his death with the help of Pat Garrett. Within this tombstone, there is a secret map leading to this whole canyon of gold. And Poncho's brother has gotten mixed up with the wrong crowd. But at the same time, Poncho is dating a girl, Becky, whose father is Xander, the sheriff of the town, who is also descendant of Pat Garrett. And then turns out he's one of the villains, I guess. There's a couple different villains, but at the end, Xander works together with Poncho because obviously now the other villains, the cartel, are, you know, threatening his daughter, Becky. So overall, especially for, I guess, what is the first book to be written, it's really well done. I think it is very fast paced. I don't really remember too many spots where it just kind of settled down. In the beginning, it caught you with like kind of that like what's happening moment and then rewinds in time, kind of slowly builds to that moment. And then once it gets to the night of the stealing of the headstone and digging up and finding out that you know, Billy's not buried there, it does not really stop. Like, it is bam, 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 bam. Perhaps some people want a little bit more rest in the book, and a little bit more time for the characters to kind of just grow and have those little interactions. But for the majority of the book, I will say I don't think you're going to be bored, and I think it's going to keep grabbing you and keep pulling you into the book. And so overall, yeah, I, I rate it pretty high. I would say 7 or 8 out of 10. It was really good, but... There is a sequel, as was teased on that interview, which will put a quick snapshot up here so you can see it. And, you know, that one kind of deals with more of a skinwalker and more of what he said was Brushy Bill Roberts. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be the Tumbleweed Williams character and perhaps even Dorado and Poncho's father, as well as Sean's father, who are brothers themselves, and kind of tell that story because, as John was saying, he's going to make it a trilogy within the 21 gun series but this specific story uh, will be a trilogy and it's going to work backwards in time and so perhaps the next one will learn what happened with the tumbleweed story and then perhaps the third one will be like the billy the kid stuff and kind of how the whole tombstone aspect and the hidden treasure map got put into there so i think it is worth a read perhaps you guys will be surprised that i've enjoyed a book that tells a lot of fiction based around this factual story right especially because we've been so hard perhaps on the brushy story i'm okay with it it's a fictional story it's not trying to pass it off as fact and a lot of times those type of books can be fun we recently read the who killed james dean book by warren newton beeth which obviously kind of plays loose with the facts and then we've also done another outlaw book where we did this shot in the back where it talks about the J. Frank Dalton is Jesse James kind of story. And even though that one's even more fictional than even Brushy Bill, I can enjoy that. It's fun. It's always neat to kind of see these hypothetical stories. And like I said, these three have been done right, and I do recommend them all. So make sure to go pick up a copy. Like I said, I'll link everything in the description below. But I did really enjoy this book, and I cannot wait for the sequel and just to read some more John LeMay books. I think very quickly John is becoming 
one of my favorite authors to read. But if you want to see more Cool's book reviews, click that link to your left. If you want to see more Cool's Paranormal, click that link to your right. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. And let us know. Have you read the noted Desperado Poncho Dumas? And also, what is your favorite John LeMay book?